Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney, and today in Homemade Science, we're going to look at a classic demonstration and see if we can make some improvements on it. We'll try this with some different size containers, some of them having more than one opening. Now, I also want to investigate the coverings. Now, this could make a great STEM investigation for any age. Now, we tip this over. Wow! Okay, so Ray, get close. <laughs> All right, to do this experiment, of course, we're going to need a container. But to do it well, it's really going to come down to what we use for a covering. Rigid pieces like plastic work, but it'll come apart very easily. Foam plates are less rigid, and they'll work a little bit better. Cardboard's a good choice until it gets soggy. I like these flexible lids. They work really well. This cover actually gives me a good enough seal that I can do some tricks with it. I can shake it up and down. I can wave it back and forth or around. I can even flip it up in the air. There we go. I think my all-time favorite have to be these balloons. They give a really good seal. Another fun material to try is a piece of screen. It does need to be covered until you have it turned upside down. It can leak and fall apart with the slightest touch. Now going on to the containers, you can start out on an extremely small scale. Of course we can always go larger and use a variety of different containers like this funnel plate on top of it. That works pretty good. The largest container I can try it in is a five gallon bucket. Now I have adapted one by adding two sticks to the bottom. This is going to make it easier to show. The rim of the lid was cut so that it's loose fitting. Pull it up to here. And I have a stopper in the bottom of it, so that I can let it out. <laughs> now instead of that lid, we can also just top it with this ball. That's it. Water level's right to here. And I release pressure inside. <laughs> so the question is, why doesn't the water come out of the container when it's turned upside down? What's holding it in there? The usual answer is that it's air pressure pushing up against the bottom. A more complete answer would take a look at the water itself. The water has a property called cohesion. It means that the particles themselves want to stick to each other. Let's see what happens with a material like sand where the particles don't stick together. They simply fall out. Now a pressure gauge could help explain this experiment a little bit better. However, this one's just not sensitive enough. So I'm going to switch to this homemade one. This represents normal atmospheric pressure. And if I inhale on the tube, the pressure drops below that. And if I exhale, the pressure increases. I'll attach it to the top of this tube so we can see what's going on. Now as I start lifting the tube out of the water we can see the pressure is being reduced and we'll get it all the way out here. Reduction in pressure and if I release the cap, let's see what happens. It goes back to normal. This is showing us that the pressure at the top of that container is less than that of the atmosphere. This is due to gravity trying to pull that sticky water downward. Now what about if the tube's longer? Fill it up with water in this rain barrel, attach a gauge here, and as I slowly bring it up, notice it's showing a greater reduction in pressure. The 
bottom. As the water drains out, the pressure returns back to normal. Now let's try it with an even longer tube. This one's 55 inches long, and I'll cap it with a foam plate. And there we go, that works. Turn it back up again. As the water column gets higher, the pressure at the top of the tube will continue to reduce as the increasing amount of water gets heavier. I haven't tried it yet, but this one's seven and a half feet long. Let's see if we can get this one to work. All right, well, that didn't work. Let's try it once more. This time I'll use a balloon instead. There we go, that's better. It works. <laughs> In theory, we could go up to about 33 feet. At that point, the pressure would drop down to absolute zero Going higher would actually form a vacuum. There is one other way that pressure can be reduced inside the container, and that's when you turn it over, a small amount of liquid will leak out without additional air getting inside. If I shake it really hard, you can see additional water come out, reducing that pressure just a little bit more. We should note that air pressure just doesn't push against the bottom. There's about 14.7 pounds of force applied against every square inch on the containers. With the atmosphere pushing against the container in all directions, we can actually cap it at the bottom and also at the top. This funnel's open at both ends and it works. We can even do it with this container that's got holes on the top, bottom, and all four sides. There it is. I think of all these demonstrations, this one's my favorite. This bottle has a string and a handle attached to it. So let's add some water and fill it up. Looks about right. And I'll stick a balloon on top. Turn it over. That's pretty good. And the string's going to allow me to swing it around a couple times. See if I can. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I want to thank you for watching. Care for me? Nope. Nope. Air pressure! Wait, so... <laughs>